Okay, it's Saturday, September 19th. Um, hopefully get a lot of things done this weekend. Um, because the glue uh, needs roughly about 24 hours of drying time, we can only work on this in about two stages. So I'll move ahead and work on some other pieces. So if you'll come in closer with the camera, um, come over here. I'm zooming. Down here. And uh, so what we did is we took Last night we uh, mixed up a thicker uh, of the epoxy. And by the way, the epoxy, I may have said this earlier, but it's this Aero Epoxy ES6209A. This is the, uh, the actual resin. This is the hardener. You mix one to one. It's kind of a yellowish epoxy. It has roughly about an hour to two hour setup time. And then there's a 24 hour cure time. So technically this isn't completely cured. It doesn't dry as hard as the other West epoxy does. So it stays a little flexible. Um, that enables it to actually be stronger because there is some flexibility to the bond. But anyway, we took the epoxy which tends to be pretty runny. Uh, so if you recall, we use it to tack the fins in place with the motor mount in the booster tube and fortunately the tacking went pretty good. We were able to remove the motor tube and so we mixed a, a solution of this epoxy and we added to it um, this uh, filler and basically it's a, it's a powder. I don't want this coming out but it's a real fine powder and the idea is you mix that into an adhesive and you can make the adhesive go from a liquid state to like ketchup state all the way up to if you add more it turns into almost like a peanut butter viscosity. So we mix that in and then this is where we're able to put fillets in. So I don't know if Tara can get this but we put it pretty thick on all the joints all around. So that way the joint is completely uh, made and now the fin technically could be experiencing a lot of force in either direction, but the adhesive makes a good weld. So I've learned through the uh, kits, a lot of the low end kits, they just glue the fins on the, the outer tube, and obviously the, the fins are used for stability and the aerodynamics, but in a big rocket, this is converting the thrust of the engine into the structural part of the rocket. This is the part that flies. It's, it's analogous to a jet engine. The jet engine is made to propel the aircraft, but if it's not attached to the air... So as I was saying, the, so the jet engine propels uh, the rocket. The booster and the exterior tubes and those come the fins creates the lift, the aerodynamics. So this part of the structure of the rocket converts that energy and thrust into the rocket. So structurally this has to be really sound and it has to be built uh, so that the structural strength uh, conveyed to the booster tube is done through the fins and the three rings. So it's important that we make these welds. Today we're going to take a three ounce a, a five ounce mesh and we're going to actually do a fiberglass, what we call tip to tip. So it'll be one continuous piece of fiberglass, if you can see this, goes from here, attaches to the engine tube, and all the way to the other tip. So that's going to bring the centering tube, the fins, everything contacted to this tube. That, that's key. So that when we put the booster tube over, uh, this will all be structurally one piece, and then we'll overlay a three ounce over this tube and it'll go same thing but it'll be going over this tube and over the fins. So the fins will be locked to the rocket in three points. The original epoxy to the, to the tube, to the five ounce fiberglass and then when it's in the booster tube to the three ounce. So that's all the structural requirements to have this tube attached to that one. So today we're going to do the fiberglass, the five ounce tip to tip. That's going to need some drying time. We'll then go and start assembling the eBay 
and all the components to hold the electronics. And then while that's draw, drying, we'll go over and bless you. We'll you. go over and actually mount the hardware into the nose, start getting the nose. Um, so the idea is we're now starting to work in three different sections of the rocket. So the video will be bouncing around a couple of times. Um, but it's going to all kind of come together probably in the next two or three days. So I'll update you some more as this dries and as we do the other pieces later today. Bye. Okay, so while I've let that dry, uh, it should be dry now, ready for fiberglass. It's been about 18, almost 20 hours since we put that. So with the heat at about 80 degrees this weekend, it should be dry. But while I've been doing that, um, I went ahead and put the eBay sled together. I don't want to pick it up because it's still drying, but I used the Aero um, epoxy again for this. And basically putting the wood pieces together, um, the cardboard dowels, I've got the uh, all threads in here holding it together. So all this is glued up. Uh, and then the eBay tube has been put together. There's a tube within a tube. You can probably see it there. It's been coated with epoxy. You see the shiny. Then you got the exterior tube. And then this is the fiberglass tube. This is the only tube that would be showing uh, once the rocket's put together. These will have the switches uh, to activate the altimeters uh, at time of launch. So because there's a tube within a tube, you can see there's a recess there. And the idea is the bulkheads here will actually go on the end of the sled. And then the bulkhead will go in the recessed area. Once it's all screwed on, uh, this will become one piece. And these technically will shield all the electronics in this little capsule here from all the ejection charge so you'll have a eject two ejection caps on this end two on this end one's primary one's backup this side pressurizes well let's start here the the bottom half pressurizes the lower half the rocket and that pops off at apogee for the drogue chute and then this part stays attached to the cone and then when it gets within about 500 feet or depending on what we set it up these charges go off and they blow the plastic nose cone off and then the main parachute comes out so this is what they call the avionics bay or some people call it the ebay and the slide goes in that slides on these rails and all electronics will be mounting to this uh, wood plank here so went ahead and cut three sections of fiberglass one two three and as well as a sheet of um, Teflon release. So again, this is the five ounce mesh. Um, so we'll be coating this, as I mentioned earlier, the tip to tip. Uh, so I've already numbered these for which section of fiberglass. They all pretty much cut the same, but I customize them a little bit for a better fit. So basically to cover all this area down into here, across the tube all the way to this side so basically pulls in this side of the fin to the two centering rings the engine tube and this all one piece of fiberglass um, so I'll rough this epoxy up a little bit with about 60 grit sandpaper and we'll mix the epoxy and next video you'll see me I'll be uh, doing the tip to tip fiberglass on this Okay, it's Sunday, um, we did the fiberglass on side one and side two. Uh, if you look here, you can see we put the five ounce, uh, six ounce almost, I guess, here from tip all the way to the other end. And we put the Teflon uh, mold release. So I did side one, and you can see side two, you can see it's here it's kind of drying. I'm going to let this set up for another day before I pull the mold, uh, pull the Teflon release off. But you can see it's one continuous uh, piece of fiberglass. 
The one side I haven't done yet is side three, so I'm going to do that real quick to demonstrate on the camera how I did that. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have done side one, let it dry, side two, let it dry, side three, because what happened was I got this coat on, that I turned it, I was doing this, the weight of the Teflon loading up with adhesive was actually causing it to peel away. I went back and tacked it in place, hopefully it comes out pretty good. It seems to be stuck pretty well, but we'll see when we pull it off. So I'm going to mix the adhesive real quick. This is the pre-cut pattern for the 6 inch, uh, six ounce, and this is the tef uh, Teflon release film. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, the mesh, the six ounce, and then we'll coat uh, that later. So um, we'll pause here and we'll come back in a second. Okay, we start by laying the fiberglass that we've cut out over, getting it kind of lined up like so, get most of the wrinkles out. The challenge of this is that there's a part that goes in and over this tube and it tends to fight me as I, as I try to pull this way, it pulls it out of the cove, so I'm making sure everything fits well. Actually in back it could use a little trimming. It lays down well. So we got to learn that from the last time. So it lays in the seams better. There we go. So I'm making sure it's going to cover all the different points. So, make sure it's kind of laid out. And now we start. So we mix the uh, West systems like before when we did the other tubes. And we bring it in, start with the center, wetting it out to the tube. Like so. A lot more blotting in this procedure. Unlike the tubes where we're trying to line them up and get a nice coverage. This we don't have to worry about the, the uh, smoothness as much. We're doing this for strength. Um, we're just trying to get it to conform the best we can to the um, to the different uh, surface patterns. So once the center tube is coated, we start the idea of fiberglass and learn you start at a center point and you work out outward. So in this case we started on the engine tube. And then as the engine tube is coated, we start working our way up the fins. And the idea is you just start working outward, radiating outward. You smooth out any wrinkles. And if the fabric was cut right, it'll start laying down flat. Problem with this, you get some of the fabric and stuff from the other side coming over. So you make sure you go all the way out to the tip, tip of the uh, fin. Just keep pulling it up like so. Again, as it saturates, you can see it turning. Transparent and revealing the, the wood underneath. 
Work on this side now, pulling this way. The day is a little cooler. We're kind of having weather more like fall today. It feels like it's kind of more in the 70s this morning. Yesterday was warmer, so it was drying a little faster on me. And because I mistakenly did two sides, and because of having to rotate it, one side was delaminating. warmer weather actually worked in my favor so I just kind of stood here and kept tacking in place until it started setting up and it set up pretty quick. Today it won't set up as quick because it's cooler temperature but I'm only doing the one side so we'll keep it facing up like this. keep pulling it up, but I have to go back periodically and push down in here because it pulls the mesh up off the, the motor tube. So we come all the way out to the end. I intentionally cut the fabric long, so I'm just bringing the adhesive up to where I see the edges wet out. Tara can show you. I've got this tip to this tip coated. We'll continue this process on out to the very end. But we'll pause the video for time purposes right now. Alright, so we finished. You can get a shot of this. So we've got it coated on the fin with a 6 ounce. Now we lay the Teflon release down and just kind of push on it and get it where it'll stick kind of lay it in place like so lay it in place we'll do some trimming here because it's Teflon, it doesn't have to be that exact as long as it touches. So we start pushing down. The contact mesh. So, there's enough glue in here, it's saturating through on its own. See it wetting up. Make sure it's covering all the parts. Pull it up a little bit here. Like so. 
And so now we start coating it. Ah. And again, like before, this is going to start Basically it levels out the epoxy, it wicks out the excessive, in other words if you coat the Teflon completely, it lets just enough do through to fill in any voids or cracks, but at the same time it pulls to the top all the excess adhesive, so that's why if you saw earlier, there's all these beads of epoxy when it dries and that's pulling out the excess so the excess dries far on top of the Teflon mesh and then when you pull it off it leaves provided you didn't leave any air pockets leaves a pretty uniform covering um, so makes the coverage to the original mesh the six out a lot more uniform instead of having some areas maybe where you got too much adhesive and um, it's glossy and in other areas where you don't have enough and you can actually feel the texture of the mesh underneath so there's a lot of adhesive on here already from when we covered, basically blot it around so we get the tips here. bring it over here. <laughs> again, this is the first again for me to do this. Um, the idea is this comes out good enough that at least the portions that are inside the booster tube, they don't have to be that pretty as long as it really bonds this fin, these fins to the motor mount tube as well as the centering rings. As I said earlier, if we can get that all structurally sound, this is key to making the this part of the rocket able to propel the exterior. So the exterior acts as the aerodynamics and the guiding of the rocket. This is where all the thrust is created. So having this mechanically, technically one piece, functioning as one solid piece, um, then we're better apt to transfer that thrust power into the rest of the airframe. a bit of anxiety when I first peel these off. <laughs> I'll be glad when I've done one complete cycle. Have that under my belt. Gotta kind of know the outcome. But in hindsight I think the tubes came out pretty good. So hopefully we have 
equal amount of luck on this. That way when we do the the three ounce on the outside, when we overlay the two booster tubes, and then we do the three ounce tip to tip on the fins on the exterior, we'll be kind of repeating something we've done before, so we should know the outcome. And since that's the last step in the exterior, anything we may have made mistakes here, we'll be able to go back and improve upon. So we'll stop the video there. I'll let this kind of dry out and I'll update you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> go in your epoxy or else it'll go in your eye and you'll lose your eyeball and don't touch fiberglass or else your finger will slice off yeah my dad said that so yeah beware